Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. This week we're gonna be doing a complete front clamshell for the Porsche. Remember this guy? This is my personal project that I started about two years ago. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today to support me through this tough decision. I've decided to take my talents to Porsche. I wanna hit the bid button just once. Take that! So we had actually done quite a bit on this. We actually got the front motor in. We also did some adventurous things like create our own rear bumper, complete with custom LED lighting. For those of you who are new, this one got sidetracked by life. I had my regular nine to five job and this was kind of more of a hobby. So I created my first blue car. This was gonna be my second build, kind of bigger and better than ever. It's been a little over a year and a half. I actually lost my primary job. I had that job for the last 16 years. And that's when I tried to make this whole electric car thing be my full-time gig. What that meant though, is I had to focus on customer cars rather than my own, because those ones make money, this one takes money. So today what we have is we have a custom front end. We've been 3D printing this for about three months. Let me show you what we've got, and then we gotta assemble it all. A while ago, we had completed the design, and this is the front clamshell. So here it is in CAD, and we need to slice it all into several little segments that we can 3D print. The 3D printer that I used most was from Creality. I've been using the K1 for quite a while, but I recently got the K2, and this one comes with an automatic filament changer, which is awesome. That means when one reel runs out, it can keep on going without any interaction with me. And because it can hold multiple filaments, it can switch between colors and things like that to make great designs. So it is retracting the black. This is gonna be a multicolor one. Looks like the yellow's coming out. And now it is doing yellow. It's so amazing how quick it goes. It is fairly quiet. At 300 millimeters per second, it is less than 45 decibels. So nozzle up to 350 degrees Celsius, bed at up to 120 degrees Celsius, and the chamber up to 60 degrees Celsius. I think the thing that I liked most is most of the printers that I've had, you have to do a lot of tweaking and fiddling just to get things to work. This one right out of the box, boom, it was working and printing just great. Had very few issues and I would really recommend it to anyone. So if you're interested in a 3D printer, I'll leave a link in the video description below. While embarking on this printing, I ordered 86 kilograms of filament. I used the PLA Plus. I think I tried every single infill type. Seems the one that prints fastest with the least amount of filament is Lightning. For this particular printer and nozzle, seemed like three walls was about the fewest that I could get away with and have it still be fairly rigid. So we just have to figure out which pieces go where. For today's sponsor, we have Roar Pedal, which is a throttle response controller. The car of choice is the Ford Focus. As you can imagine, this won't work with every car. You do need a gas pedal that's got wires to it, not just a pull cable. Basically, this is gonna be one of the easiest installs ever. As you can see, you just take the connector off the top of the pedal and you plug in this new device, one to the pedal and the other one to the cable that you just unplugged. And that is it. Other than it being a little awkward, installation took about 60 seconds. So now we will turn it on. We've got the app installed as well as the there is a display. So it's race mode, level three. <laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't really think I would be able to tell the difference, but I totally can. Jeez, yeah, that is like insane. Oh, that makes me laugh. So just take a quick drive around the block. But yeah, it makes me smile. Just, I didn't think it would really, uh, I don't wanna say it didn't work, but I didn't think I would notice it as much. Yeah, that is interesting, I, yeah. Very cool product. All right, we're gonna just change it from race to normal. Now we're gonna see if we can tell the difference. Yeah, I can tell the difference. Normal really does feel normal. So for this car, yeah, I don't know, it feels normal. Let's try Eco. Yeah, I can tell the difference. So I'm gonna switch back to race and uh, just, again, uh, compare. Yeah, it, that is just fun. It is like super respond. oh my gosh, it is quite different. A touchy is probably not the right word, but just it makes it feel a lot more aggressive. So. Very cool. So there is a wide range of compatible vehicles, but check before you order. So it has five modes and 63 presets. So it's race mode, level three, sport plus, sport, normal, eco. So those are the five driving modes you can do with this new pedal. This is also, you can enjoy lag-free throttle response. So it does come with an app as well as a remote screen. It also connects to your Bluetooth automatically. It is super easy to install. I think it's pretty cool. If you're interested in a product like this, I'll leave a link in the video description below.
All right, this is company headquarters here. So I actually started, these are several of the prints. You think, oh, that's a lot. Oh no, this is like a third. Let me show you the others. Lots of parts, more parts, more parts, and more parts. You thought we were done. And again, we got more parts, got more parts, more parts, more parts, more parts, more parts. For those of you who like Legos or puzzles, this one's for you. This may look like a lot or not a lot, depending on how you see it. This is about half. We're gonna try and see if we can get a couple of these pieces together, see if there's a best strategy. So there's all the port material and things. That's just from these few parts, that, and then we've got a lot more. All right, every time I've tried something different, this time I'm going with the clear Gorilla Glue, and now I'm starting to match. So this is the first match I found, and I'm gonna put that on the surfaces that are mating, and then I'm also gonna do some heat staples just to kind of keep things in place while the adhesive cures. So this is one of the first pieces. This is kind of like, I'll call it the headlight housing. And then we've got these flaps up front as well. So that's kind of one side. I believe this is the left side. And uh, so we'll do the right side next, but we've got just tons and tons and tons more.
Oh my goodness, we are getting there, but I'm pretty certain we're missing a piece or two. This likely means that uh, in the progression of printing that I just kind of skipped over one accidentally. But right here there's a piece, and right here another piece that I just don't see that we have. Um, other than that, though, we may have just about everything. Um, it's actually a lot bigger than this. It comes this way quite a bit, but um, I do want to get it out of the basement before we uh, start putting those on. So um, I'll see if I can find those pieces and reprint them, but then it's uh, time to move this one up to the garage. We have moved our 3D printed front clamshell to the garage. So the reason for doing that is uh, this extends a lot further this way, and I just didn't think I was going to be able to fit it through doors and hallways and things. So. Got a few more pieces to fit on. Hopefully we're not missing any more. Whoa. Um, Gotta phone a friend. Oh. Hey, can you come in the house garage real quick? I just can't manipulate and do the heat. Okay, off. Let's just do one more back at the back. Okay, I think that's it. Okay. I think I can do the rest. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Light, I want one more help. So this front corner, here, I'll see if I can pivot this out a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's scary. Oh, okay, off. A little pressure. Okay, here we go. Yep. All right, I believe this is it for the, uh, we're calling this, I think, the front clamshell. We also have kind of headlight housings that go into these areas, but they are removable. So I think next, oh geez, I gotta break off all these. These kill my fingers. But uh, we'll see if about putting it on, I probably need to cut out kind of this front section here, which we knew was gonna happen and it's already a little bit damaged. So um, we're gonna cut that out and see if we can fit it on. So I've got an AC line that I gotta take off. All right, to begin with, uh, we're gonna take this panel out. There's like a seam right here, so I'm just gonna cut all along the seam and if, see if that has um, enough room or if we have to kind of go further. Okay, I'm good. Yep. Wow, well, looks like the file. Woo! It's the first time I've seen it. So it's looking really good. I don't know why that one's like glossy, but all oh, that looks so good. So this is with what kind of one of the headlight housings here. And then here and here we got some active panels. Like I said, I'm guessing it might contact there, but. Still seems like it's hitting something, right? It just looks like, to me it looks like it needs to go down. Just pivot. All right, so we were able to cut off this main front panel. We had to actually cut off a little bit more just to get some clearance. Now the issue we're finding is it seems like it's resting on this, which I don't want to cut. And so it's just not letting the front drop down as far as it needs to. So it needs to drop down, you know, another two inches or so. So I put on a marker, kind of the place where it was hitting. So I think what needs to happen is basically this just needs to be kind of cut out down to this surface. I'm gonna start doing that and you do that on both sides. So I was able to do a little bit of cutout so it's sitting lower now in the front. So I think this is about uh, 
the look that it's gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, those headlight housings in and then uh, maybe we'll roll the car out just to get a good picture of it without the cluttered garage. Okay, as a reminder, the headlights are gonna be down here and these are actually gonna be some active aero flaps. So we'll be 3D printing those and putting those on as well. And then essentially the active arrow will go whoosh, with that sound effect. Whoosh. We do have a front lip for this one. So that one's uh, still printing and being made, but uh, yeah, that's what it's looking like. There will be side skirts and a, I don't know what you call the things right after the wheel, but the little wheel wind deflectors. Um, so again, those are printing as well. So we've got airflow that's gonna enter the wheel here exit out here again lots of deflectors that are going to be printed later yeah i think it looks pretty sharp so you can probably tell but this is meant to be wider than the original so see we're gonna have wider wheels um probably like two or three inches again that'll help with some traction yeah i think it looks really good again as mentioned we're gonna have some side skirts with the uh, air deflectors in the back we've got a front lip that we've got printing so that'll all be coming soon the windshield cowling and windshield wipers are going here. I know there's gonna be a lot of comments, so go ahead and leave them. I'm gonna try and address some of the ones I think that you guys might have. Some people will say, hey, you should really key it. So again, like put a dowel hole in dowels or do a dovetail. I've done that before. It doesn't help that much. You need enough clearance that it can get together. And then once it's together, it kind of can still move. The other thing is when you're doing it in three dimensions, if you've got like a post going in this way, if it's already here, you can't really put that post in, right? Cause it's got to drop in from there. So it kind of doesn't work for three dimensional puzzles that way. Other things I wish I would have done. I wish I would have labeled the parts. It took a long time to try and figure out where pieces went. It was fun. It, to be honest, it's very much like a puzzle, but uh, it took a while to figure out where things went. I really am excited to work on this one. It's just, I can't, when I say I can't, I'm not even gonna break even from the money that YouTube gives me to do what I did. And then it's just all the hours that I could have spent working and gaining money on some other car. That's why this one's kind of on the back burner. Um, again, it is one of my favorites. It's just gonna take a little bit of time because I can't work on it full time. Unless somebody wants to buy it, um, if they want to commission me to complete this build and they want it at the end, absolutely, I'd love to do that. So if you're interested, let me know. That does it for this time. It's been a long time in the making. This has taken probably about six months. Um, lots of printing, lots of trial and error, lots of uh, puzzle fitting. So it's probably about $200 in filament or so. That's kind of a lot because my videos don't make $200. So if you like this, please hit the like button consider subscribing. That helps the channel a bunch. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. So for those of you, so it takes lots and lots of sidetracked. Man, they're loud. So today what we've got is we've got a personal project from a 